Well, death can do things to people. Apparently, positive. Thanks. Yeah, that bed used to be a person. Romeo F. Neumann, or Bedman as he used to be, used to be one of the villains of the Xard series. He was calculating, very intelligent, and all of that. And he was also completely unconscious. That didn't stop him from dropping truth bombs on people after beating them in battles. And it's so wonderful because he's voiced by Yuri Lonefall in English in Xard Sign. Yeah, I love him. We talk about survival of the fittest a lot, but all that really means is the skilled live and the unskilled die. Since you're freely in that second group, maybe pick your fights a bit more carefully. You understand what I'm saying? It's never going to matter how much you want it when you're up against someone who can kill you with a sneeze. Bad man, win. win. To me, one of Yuri Lorenthal's best performances fight me, and one of his most out there characters. Although originally believing morality doesn't exist. I do not understand humans who are motivated by love. A person is born, lives for a number of years, and interacts with up to 8 billion people. What proof is there of something they can't even define? He eventually sacrificed himself to protect Delilah, even at his own cost. So he's dead now, or is he? Yeah, Bedman did not get reincarnated as a girl. That's his sister, Delilah. Refusing to go to the afterlife, his now sole purpose is to protect Delilah. Obviously, Delilah doesn't fully appreciate how Romeo treated her. Yet we see in Batman's Arcade mode, we see the bed constantly running away and trying to terminate itself. Yet at the end, it realizes that it should stay with Delilah and protect her. Well, that's an adorable end to a pretty despicable person. Hey, at least he'll be spouting truth bombs from heaven. Well, I think that marks the conclusion of our little tete-a-tete. -tete. I'm a little afraid that if we kept going, I might well break you. So exit stage right then, if you please. You're hardly a match for, well, my glasses, let's say. Perhaps this is a blessing? Bet, bet, bet. Win! Hello, everyone. This is David Leibowitz with Philosophy POV Game Philosophy. And we just did a little lore breakdown on Bedman and Delilah. And, well, again, ground rules. I am not trained in musical theory. I am a philosopher. I know Jung. I know my both Western and Eastern philosophy. And yeah, that's basically it. I will sing. I'm a trained singer. I haven't been trained since high school, but I will happily give you performance notes. And without further ado, let's get to the circle. I can't. Like, we have the little circle, like, what, is, so we have to get a sense, what is this circle that we're dealing with? It's like heavy down, like, now, now we're getting serious about everything. Here we go. Welcome to the Yen Fan World. What's my end game? Their game uh, zero. What's welcome to the infinite world? So, Bedman, before he died, was very much into like very rational person, very into mathematics and all of that stuff. So, all this being framed in the notion of a circle is a geometrical I thing, right? Myth math. From what I know, you can basically theorize hyperspace, infinity, all these grand things. But what's my end game? There came a zero. There's nothing. Math, all that done. Reason, gone. I'm now just a machine. I'm just a bed. All that rationality, gone. Send here, there is a silence. Here. Silence. I'm in the afterlife. But am I? Be aware. No PC. No peace, because I'm not in heaven yet. Either. Where there is... Where there is no... Because circles have no beginning or end. It's constantly circling... I mean, it's circling around, right? We're in the absolute infinite space, and there's no way to get around that. There's no beginning and no end. Will I be like... Will I be like that? 
Will I be like that? Will I be just forever in this beginning and end? You know what? There's no beginning and end. Nietzsche's eternal recurrence. Woo! Nietzsche. Basically, again, if for you who don't know, the eternal recurrence is that life is constantly always cyclical. This is also f- similar to Hindu cyclical ideas of cr- constant creation destruction. That life is now constantly in this sort of void that it's constantly being re- experienced over and over and over and over again. And that's the endless cycle that we all live in, in t- Nietzsche's eyes. And you do words that- the words that well, we just talked about words and smell the words I'm a bed I can't speak I can't I'm an animal now I can't speak to anything um, I'm now in this void space I've lost my reason but could that possibly be liberating who knows that maybe could actually be liberating I won't go waste to ruin my head waste to ruin my waste to ruin my head now I'm all this clogged things ruin my head. My I my intelligence is deteriorating. But sort of thing about this bed man was forever unconscious. Yes, he is constantly thinking in his dream space, which is great that he's a strong unconscious, but he's forever unconscious. That that sort of the idea that reason is further forever taken under and gone in the underbelly of our lives. That the people who are reasonable don't fully understand themselves. And that's what Bedman did. He didn't never, never fully understand it himself. God, do you see the radio God, do you... It's like very chanting and very, um, very creepy. Because that's what we're sort of in, this creepy space. Do you hear the beautiful chant? I think this is a reference to people in heaven, at least Christian, somewhat Jewish, but more Christian idea, that people are, oh, when they go to heaven, we'll all be chanting God's beautiful name, the Lord's beautiful name, Jesus' beautiful name. But does he? Does he hear all of it? But... Nothing here. This is Sartre. This right here is Sartre. Again, I'm still not too knowledgeable about Sartre, but Jean-Paul Sartre basically says that, as I said a little bit in the Gravity video, that existence, there is no essence to existence. There's only being. There's no being. There's only doing. So there's our relation to God is empty. We are so distant, so distant from God, and that's exactly what this is about, being distant from God. In our new rationalized age, we are fundamentally distant from God because reason has taken over and that's exactly what happened with Bedman. Pitch black, pure white, all the same. Pitch black, that's probably hell, pure white, or pitch black death, pure white, maybe I'm in heaven. All the same, it doesn't matter if I'm either in the beautiful light of God or I'm in just black of death or pitch black, pure white, again, darkness and light. All the same, it doesn't matter. Now I've gone to a closer Nietzschean conclusion, going away from God, going away from this high-ordered ideas of reason, and going towards more ideas that, of love that goes beyond good and evil. Though, again, Ben Man never had much for morality in the first place. Endless, finite. Again, we talk about this with the dr- with Drift, endless, finite. That the endless is in the finite. That there's fundamentally this dialogue in the Hegelian sense of uh, between the endless and the finite. But it doesn't matter. We're just fundamentally in this void space that is the circle. Copy that. Copy that because it's like a machine still, right? That's why I was saying that. <laughs> so the actual lyric is actually consuming 10 billion years in an instant. I think that's the the notion that we're talking about the universe itself. We're talking about I'm in the fundamental. The circle is the universe, especially if we think about this in the t- the sense of Plato's Timaeus, where he thinks about the soul and the universe both as a circle, and that is the blueprint for Dante's Paradiso. The circle is in that, but the idea is that we're constantly there's so many like how quickly really time goes how. 
how minuscule our lives are, as we talked about with Smell of the Game. But does that matter? Does it matter that we look at and we realize how minuscule we are? How how grand Ben Ben thought he was, but how much he's falling, like the fall of an ego? Yeah. But and I'll come to you without and I'll come to you without a second thought. It doesn't matter. I will love you. Uh, he's talking, of course. He's coming to Delilah, his sister. That it's his, his apology to his sister that I will be there for you. I'm sorry I had these maniacal plans before, but now I just want to love you. I want to be here for you. you sort of like Sartre's idea about being recognized. Please recognize me. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here, Delilah. I'm here, God. I, please recognize me. Don't just watch at me. Don't objectify me, because that's what he is. He's a bed. He's an object. No. This is sort of like the struggle of an object to be seen, an animal to be seen as a person, to be recognized as a, a thou, a thou in the Buberian sense, another person, um, someone from Heidegger, that We've, instead of view, viewing it as an it, bad man as an it, no, it's Romeo. I'm here. I'm Romeo. I'm here. Please see me as a you, not, or a thou, not an it. And I will treat, and then I can treat you better when we view each other as a thou, not an it. The, the border of the circle. So the border of the circle obviously means that we're basically, we're in heaven we're so close to heaven, but I decided to not go. I decided to stay inside this bed, the soul inside the bed. Soul. D probably rationalized away the idea of soul. No, soul exists. This is this rational person realizing his spiritual notions and trying to, at this last night, repenting, repenting, repenting. But no, I can't repent anymore. I have to be here now. I have to do my love. The circle, the board of the circle, this is like there's circles in Dante's Paradiso and... This sort of like the idea of the medieval idea of squaring a circle to make a square of the circles circles area, but of course it's hard to you can't. Dante talks about that, but it's a little over my head with that stuff. But the idea is that in these the, that people are the edge of the circles are the ones right at the edge of heaven, but cannot fully be there. One after the other over again we're back to the eternal recurrence and over again I wish a new new pendulum a new pendulum this is Hegelian dialects this is the constantly the world goes back and forth between life and chaos order and chaos between if you know Kaiser's um, whole deal in Fallout New Vegas, he thinks that he's that, oh, if I bring out some chaotic, destructive empire, then it'll go back into something even greater. That's the Hegelian. Like, this is the new pendulum. And that's me from going from evil, evil to being loving. This is a complete shift, a complete dialogue with himself, right, between the two different selves, his rational self and his now mechanical self, his now soul in this bed. I can't get to heaven through the mold. Like white black again. It's just hard to see. I'm completely reason has completely been jumbled. I can't find with access because my eyes. I mean, his eyes were ever. He couldn't ever really see. I mean, sources say he has a third eye because he was asleep. But, like, I can't even really see my eye lens. My eye lens, the eye at the top of the bed. I can, it's like I'm now a robot looking through things like this. That's what's happening. Doesn't matter, black wife. There's no, there, I mean, this is his, also his morality. I mean, like, there is no, for him, there was no morality. But he's finding, I think, the Nietzschean idea and the love through this instead. I'm Copy that. The 
best part of the song is about to happen. God. God. Do you see the radio So this is a complete wow that this choice of performance. Do you see the radiant light? Like this idea of he seems like he's really sh It sounds really weird. It sounds like Ren and Stimpy sort of. It's funny. Or something else. Like some cartoony voice. But I love it. But the idea that, okay, he's really like... He's kind of both a little iffy in how he's performing it. But he's like... He's really like... Grass like, do you see the... It's like... It's, like, it's just creepy. And it's, it's not creepy. It's like just wow. And I love it. Do you hear the beautiful chant? Do you feel a tender wall? It's all gonna happen like this because it's all gonna go away. Nothing here but no. No. There's no more tender light. There's none of that. You're so distant from God. God can't see you. We're past God now. Reason has gone. But we can go highly reasonable as Batman was, or we can go loving and beyond good and evil as Nietzsche goes with and how he's going with now as he's repenting for all he's done. You! you. God, in a sense, is also Delilah. Di Delilah can't see it. Delilah doesn't acknowledge anything about what Batman has done. She just doesn't care. She wants her brother, but this is all she can have, is this bed. Of course, I, if I'm correct, I think the bed tries to freaking end itself, to kill itself, but then at the end of the arcade, when I was like, okay, no, fine, I'll stay with you, I'll stay as your brother, to what I can. Sort of like, a, I, not Iron Giant, but like in a Full Metal Alchemist, like, this is all I can be now. God can't hear any of this. We're so distant from God. Nothing. This is our current state of existence. When I'm in heaven and I and I can't reach heaven. You can give someone something. If I can just give someone, if I can give my Delilah, if I can deliver her. This, give her my apologies. I want something. Oh, it's so creepy. Like, oh no, but I'm in such depression and pain that I can't give Delilah anything. It's so bad, but... No home. No rest. No, re no rest. Rest. This. No home. No rest. These are all things of civilization. This is what is here right now. There's no more hope. No, I'm not in my bed anymore. I'm now active. I'm now the bed itself. I need to go further and be this way, and be with you, and act, and do. Be before do. As Winnicott, the psychoanalyst of play, would say, "Be before do." No hope. Copy that. I may not be able to make you smile, though, but I'll never make you cry. Even once, never. I'll never make you cry. I, this is all I can do for you. It's all I can be here for you in the only way I can. I struggle to go above the universe, to be beyond the universe, to go to go into heaven, to be above me, to be above this material reality, but I can't. I can't do that. I can only be here right now and be in the moment, and that is beautiful, because that is how we should be. It, you, I know this might be like an unhealthy mindset, and so it is, but also it's like, this is how we, this is how we, how we, how we triumph with all of that. Alright, 
That was the circle. Again, it's a little early. I did think through this through, but I think that's, again, is a lot more to unpack. And if you want to unpack this song a little further with me, come to the Discord. It will be in the description below. There's a philosophical discussion chat. We can discuss this even further or in the chat and in the lens below. But I believe I gave you the, at least the ingredients to think about this song. Sartre, Paradiso, Nietzsche, to the Timaeus. All of these things, a very abstract song, and that's why this was actually the first song that was really like, I gotta do this. I gotta, I gotta break down the song because it's so out there. All right, finally, next time, God Shattering Star. Peace. It would be less than desirable if you went missing during this phase, so let's call this insurance. Don't think this means you're indispensable, though far from it. I enjoyed our little bath of fisticuffs, but now it's time for me to get back to work. What's with that look? You should be thanking me. Next time I might accidentally hit a little too hard.